Good morning, guys. Day number two. Pema Dum Keg. Pema Dum Cook. Amajijus. I don't know the names of these lakes. Pretty tired today, I'm not going to lie. We we hit the cusk fishing pretty hard last night. We were going to go till about 8 or so. And, geez, we were having such a good time hanging out with each other. We ended up going till, I think, close to 11.30. And I came in, slept an hour, got up, checked the traps. Every hour till about a little bit over an hour ago. So I still got lines in the water. Got a chance for another cusk, I'm hoping. We ended up popping, I think, six or seven. No size to any of them, which was surprising how small they were. I uh, ended up keeping three that we can get some meat out of, make some cusk nuggets today, do a little catch and cook from last night. Plan for today is to set up for salmon in the morning, do a little jigging for togue, and also look for some more cusk, and possibly set a brookie line, because I think there are, there's brookie in this chain of lakes, but it's not really known for it over here where I'm fishing in front of the boom house, so I might still set for one, because you never know, they got tails and they can swim, so they could be anywhere. Got the coffee brewing, the coffee's going to hit pretty good today, pretty tired, not a lot of sleep, it's like 5.30 right now, but the nice thing is, things firmed up last night, it got pr pretty cold, not super cold, it's going to get warm again and slushy situation again today, so I'm not sure if I'm going to end up staying tonight and doing a day three, or if I'm going to try to pack up and get out of here before it gets to be too much of a mess. If I do another day, then I'll just have to do an exit sometime in the morning when it firms up overnight. I brought stuff for cooking breakfast and everything, but pretty tired. I don't know if you guys have ever been that way, but I'm tired enough and worn out from yesterday where I'm not even that hungry, so I'm going to drive some Mrs. Dunsters into me. She's a Canadian lady that makes some pretty good donuts that they sell here at the Canafords in Maine. It's spelled Hannafords, but it's pronounced Canafords. Today I am fishing solo. Everybody took off last night for the night. They're going to recover today, probably do some unpacking and get ready for the grind back to work on Monday. This lake, I guess, is getting overrun with salmon, so you're allowed three salmon with a 12 inch minimum, which is pretty liberal for Maine. Maine's usually super protective of their salmon, but I guess there's a pile of them in here and a pile of small ones. They want to start getting some of the smaller ones out. So some have a chance to grow bigger and hopefully produce a decent trophy salmon lake in the state of Maine somewhere. He's there. Ooh, decent. Nice one. All right. Nice salmon. Good way to start the day with a silver side. Easy, easy, easy. You're not going to make it. Nice little salmon there. That one's big enough to eat. We'll take him home. So I know a lot of you guys that fish salmon, fish them, you know, anywhere from just under the ice to like 12 foot down over pretty deep water, you know, over 30, 50, even a hundred foot of water. And this is just the way I learned, you know, and, and I know you catch them that way. And I'm just going to show you how I catch them is I catch them a little shallower. This is 12, eight to 12 foot of water you know, only 20 foot off a, of shore or a rock or structure. And I just fish them a couple feet below the ice in that eight to 12 range, sometimes as shallow as like six foot. When I target them, I catch them pretty regularly and pretty easily by doing that. And I think what they do is they drive the smelt in and they're chasing smelt in on the shoreline. And rather than the smelt being able to go every single different direction, up, down, left, right, or center, the shoreline takes away a big part of that escape route for them. So they can't go down because they don't have the depth. They can't go in because they're already up against the bank. So it takes away a couple different spots for them to get away and makes them a little bit more easy target. And I've found some of the bigger salmon closer to shore by doing that. So. 
if you're salmon fishing, give it a try and you might pop a brook trout too. It's similar to how we fish brook trout in Maine in the ice. Oh, he's there. Ooh, big head shakes. Wow. Oh, big head shakes coming at me. Another decent one, I think. Wow. Going about 100 miles an hour. Man, this thing's got some huge head shakes. Oh, geez, another good one. Right, look at that Goldie. All right, we got enough to eat for right now and I'm getting close to my limit. So I'm gonna pop that hook out and get him right back down the hole. Well, we'll do a little bit of a late breakfast. Got some taters and eggs and ketchup and hot sauce on there. Flags were flying pretty good this morning and then they just kind of died off. So maybe do a little bit of jigging and check the other side for some cusk too. But first, drive some good breakfast in me and then we'll go from there. Ooh, we're down a color. We are down a color. This thing took a crazy run. I don't even feel him yet. Yep, he's there. Definitely there. Feels pretty good. Feels like a salmon. Shoreline trap's doing really well today. We're gaining on them. Definitely gaining on that strain. These salmon have huge head shakes and they fight a lot harder than trout. Yep. Oh, geez. Another nice one. Got him. <laughs> Another good salmon for the pot. All right, here's a little trick that a good buddy of mine, Matt, showed me. And when he showed me, the light bulb just went off. I could not believe I didn't know this trick already. After you get one on your tip up like this and they've stripped a bunch of line, I did a pretty good job fighting it and just throwing it way out and then kind of moving it over. But if I just pick this up and reel it in or, or loop it back over, you could see the lines under and over and I'm gonna get knots in here and it's gonna be a major problem. I'm either gonna have to cut it out or it's gonna take a while to clean up. In normally ice fishing, it's cold, it's windy and you don't wanna mess around like this with your hand. My buddy Matt taught me this trick. He said, you take the end with your hook on it and you walk it out and you never ever get a knot. It's pretty rare to ever get a knot and then you can wind it right back in. So rather than take it from the real side, which you know, you, you wanna do, in most cases, you take it from the hook side and watch this. You peel it out and it's, I'm pulling from the top of the pile. And you could walk it all the way out or you could kind of just spread it out like this. And then when I reel it back in, it's just going to come back in. That has saved me so much time 
and so many knots. And I thank Matt every day that we fished together for teaching me that trick. And it was just something I, I'd ice fished for 20 years and didn't know that trick. And you know, you're always battling with knots and stuff. So hook side, wind her out, take her out, walk her out, do whatever you gotta do. But right now I'm gonna wind that up. There's not gonna be any knots at all. Another trick dealing with line and, and your reel. My buddies from West Grand, Brandon, Kyle, Cameron, and Colin. I started watching what those guys were doing. Now those guys fish deep. So they're usually fishing, you know, 12 fathom or so for Togue and then Togue take another 12 fathom run and all of a sudden they got 150 to 200 foot of line out and rather than deal with what I'm dealing with right now they work as a team as friends so they'll what they'll do is they'll step over the trap and hold it between their legs and they'll use both hands one keeps the line taut and the other one reels it in and that way it's evenly spaced on your reel and you're not getting it around the post or the handle and a lot of times they have that done before the guy even has the fish on the ice and that way you're you know it'd take a long time to get that done and get your bait back down so that's another trick if you if you're working in teams or even in a situation like this where i'm alone it's a lot easier for me to actually use that reel and wind this up this is only a three inch reel and as you can see it's coming up pretty good and it's this is the quickest way to get this back in gear and and back in the water you just take your finger and move it side to side to fill the void in the reel where it's lowest. So that way it's even and it's not going to roll over on top of itself. And also using this to keep the line taut so it goes on there nice and tight too. There we go. Just like that, we're back in business. He's on it. He hit it. Got him. Got him something wrong with my reel but I got him it's a salmon wow cool all right my first jig salmon awesome right off the bottom that was pretty cool on a drop shot drop shot with a dead minnow there goes my minnow right there Oh, something's gonna eat that. Something just ate my minnow. There he goes, guys. Salmon on jig rod. She is getting wet out here, fellas. The lake's got an inch or two on it. It's probably close to 60 degrees today. Everything is melting. There's plenty of ice. There's gotta be two foot of ice anyway. Wow, look at that water running underneath the cut. Wonder where it's going. Well, that <laughs> Yep, <laughs> holy cow. Look at that. I thought I heard some water running. Dang. Well, that anchor's gonna stay out.
All right, we got a flag. It's pickup time. Last flag of the year right here, guys. Oh, he's there. He feels big, but he might be hung up. Gotta be hung up. Yeah, there he goes. He just came free. Feels pretty big. Coming at me, where he came off one or the other. I think he's coming at me. Holy cow, he's coming fast. There we go, I just hit him again. Burnt him. Decent. I think it's a togue. I think it might be a togue. Of all fish, which there aren't many in here. Nope. Look at that square tail. Look at that, Brookie. <laughs> you kidding me? Oh my God, what a fish to end on. <laughs> Woo! They don't really catch Brookies in here from what I hear. I cannot believe it. That trap kicked out my biggest salmon ever. And now one of the better brookies I've ever caught. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm all packed up. This is probably the last fish of the year. Last trap of the year. Last day on the ice for the year. And I'm picking up my last trap and the flag is up. It's only been up twice all weekend. It was that landlocked salmon. That big one. Now this brookie. That is a staving brookie. What a beauty. Wow. What a way to end the year. Unbelievable. Look at the colors on that guy. That brookie is thick. Didn't he fight? He fought pretty good too. I really thought I was hung up on bottom, but he was just giving a, a battle. That's, that's over two pounds pretty easy. Absolute gorgeous fish and that is gonna eat really nice. They don't get much prettier than that. Well guys, if this ends up being the last episode of the year, I really want to thank you guys for helping grow the channel. I put a ton of hard work into it and a ton of effort into it. And the reason I did it was for you guys because of the feedback I was getting and, and you know, so much positive energy going back and forth. I really want to thank you guys for, for helping grow the channel. And it motivates me to grow it even more and do more of the stuff that, that I enjoy doing and that I, I believe you guys enjoy seeing me do. I've said it once, I'll say it again, is the three most important things for my channel is one that I inspire people, whether it be to inspire them to get out ice fishing or to make their own YouTube channel or to get outdoors or to go winter camping or, or just to do something. If you can inspire somebody, it, just, it really makes me feel good to be able to do that. And the second thing is to educate. I've been so fortunate with so many teachers and people with more knowledge than me in the outdoors that have helped me and educate me over the years. So if I could pass that along to anyone else, whether they're younger, older, or the same age, that means a lot to me too. So those are the first two things. And then the last thing is to entertain. You know, my channel isn't all about entertainment, but if, if it can entertain people too, more power to you. And I enjoy entertaining as well. So thanks guys for viewing. I hope this isn't the last one of the year, but it might be. We're losing ice super fast. I'm getting off the lake right now. Oh man, I cannot even believe that just happened, guys. I mean, how many times do we all go ice fishing and you're picking up that last trap and you're just hoping for one more flag? And this is pretty much the end of the year for me. I'd be lucky if I can get out one more time because the conditions are fading in a hurry. And I had everything all ready to go, packed up on the sled. And I was like, well, that's it. I'm gonna go pick up my traps. And the last trap I got to, oh, lucky, the new main flag on that one, on that jack trap. And it was rolling. I thought I had a togue when I saw the dots because it was fighting so hard. I, hadn't, I didn't even think for a second it was gonna be a big old brook trout. And man, I'm, I'm still stoked. That's the type of fish right there that carries you all the way to next season. That's like the golfers who go out and shoot 105 and hit one good shot and they can't wait to get back out again. That's the way I'm feeling right now. Guys, once again, thanks for tuning in. You have no idea how much it, all the support means to me and the positive comments and the, the thumbs up when you guys hit that sub button. That means a lot to me and I really, 
think we're building a really cool community here with the channel and it's all doing part to you guys thanks again for tuning in hopefully we get some more ice fishing but i don't know we'll see uh...